Welcome uh, to the Jack Morton Auditorium, to the School of Media and Public Affairs, to one of our very favorite topics in uh, Washington, D.C., scandal. Uh, a discussion about the role that media play in political scandals, uh, particularly presidential scandals. Our distinguished scholar and colleague, Professor Bob Entman, spent a lot of time writing this book, and I recommend it to you. Um, it's got very extensive research and analysis in it, and a narrative and an argument that is unsettling but compelling. The case he makes is not what some, even in the media, and I think we'll hear some of this a little bit later, would say is conventional wisdom, which is what makes it wisdom. It's not conventional. I want to introduce now and let uh, invite uh, uh, Bob Edman to come up and speak to you for, for a few minutes. Bob is the J.B. and M.C. Shapiro Professor of Media and Public Affairs at GW. His expertise is focused in political communication, race relations in the media, media bias. He doesn't teach how to do media bias, he teaches about media bias. <laughs> when the media publicize misconduct by public officials and treat that misconduct as an urgent problem that has to be thoroughly investigated and remedied by holding someone accountable. That's my definition of scandal. Uh, media neglect most corruption. They provide too little, not too much scandal coverage, and this is especially true when we're talking about powerful people, powerful national leaders. Not too much scandal, but too little. Feeding frenzies are the exception, not the rule. They don't really happen very often, especially when you're talking about dealing with powerful people. It's not the media, but governmental bodies, political parties, that really drive the scandal process. And if there are excesses, Typically, they involve uh, parties and government agencies that are involved in creating the scandal and, and keeping it going. Cover-ups and lying do work. It is wrong to advise someone who's involved in a potential scandal. Just admit it, get it out there right away, because they'll get us for the cover-up if, you know, if we don't do this. Uh, empirically, if you look at the evidence, that is not true. Cover-ups and lying often work. That's why politicians do it so often. There is a problem with our uh, political scandal, political communication system, and that is it's not calibrated to any standard. There's no calibration here. There's no relationship between the seriousness of the misconduct and the degree or nature of media attention. Now, I think the conventional wisdom and our intuition would suggest, and actually some of the books that I have to criticize in my book, suggests that the, uh, the greater the damage, uh, the higher up the corruption goes, the stronger the media response. That's kind of, you might think that's how it should be, I, I guess I do, but it's not true. I'm a kind of bystander in the scandal reporting business. I've been around for a lot of them, I haven't broken them like Michael, but I did have the dubious distinction of interviewing Bill Clinton on the day that Monica Lewinsky broke, completely by coincidence. Uh, I'd had a previously scheduled interview with him, and um, in the course of this interview, when I had to ask him about Monica, which was certainly not my intention, I had prepared a lot of questions about Social Security, <laughs> um, he said, well, I don't know anything more than you do about this, Mara. Um, you know, context is everything. One of the, you know, now, you know, uh, wisest things, now virtually a cliche that's been said on the subject is, the scandal is not what's illegal in Washington, it's what's legal. I think it was Mike Kinsley who first came up with the line. Ellsberg and the Pentagon Papers leak might be equated uh, in more current days to the WikiLeaks leak yeah. uh, that really uh, infuriated a lot of very senior people in the Obama administration who were determined to crack down on that. And that, of course, uh, led to the arrest and current uh, court-martial of Bradley Manning. And there was sort of a can-do atmosphere in the White House. Well, we, we have to do it ourselves. And that was a fundamental error right there to try to set up any kind of investigative unit inside I'm the White curious, House. I'm given that we have a former FBI director in the audience here, why didn't they trust the FBI? Well, this is before Judge Webster, I think, was director <laughs> of the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> and I was not asked to testify, which I thought was interesting because, but for what happened in 1971, where two of them worked for me, G. Gordon Liddy and E. Howard Hunt, 
who then went on to work with the committee to reelect the president. You really hung with a great crowd. Well, well yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> HR is my strong suit here. But, um, <laughs> you know, I think what happened in 1971 was much more serious and said that to the judge that sentenced me to prison. We happened to agree. I mean, I think that's why he sent me to prison, but I think uh, um, it's, um, but it was something where I think today we just sort of lump all scandals into one big stew, and I don't think that's quite right. We also invited Dan Rather to be here this evening. He knows something about scandal and scandal coverage. He couldn't make it, but he wrote a, a handwritten note to, to Bob, said, thank you for scandal and, silen uh, scandal and silence. Thank you for writing it and for sending me a, a, a copy. I've read it start to finish. It is excellent and important. And I think that is a great way to end the evening. Excellence and importance of your contribution.